If you work in GRC and cybersecurity or you want to work in GRC, you have to watch this video. It is a game changer and it's going to be asked of you in the role of GRC. Artificial intelligence is everywhere these days. We've got self-driving cars, personalized shopping recommendations. It's embedded in bots. It's embedded in all the things that we're using. It's changing pretty much every industry. But here's the thing. With all this innovation comes one massive responsibility and it's managing risk. Hello, GRC Mafia. I'm not just talking about chatbot glitches or mild hallucinations. There's data breaches, biased algorithms, disinformation, a lot more. And AI has become much more integrated into business operations risks become harder to track, manage, and most importantly, explain. And you know the business is all about that straight cash, homie, and they are going ham on AI. So how do we tackle this growing challenge, okay? Imagine, if you will, for a minute, that we have a roadmap that helps us understand, classify, and mitigate these risks in a way that everyone from junior analysts who just got here all the way up to the C-suite can easily grasp. Guess what? I'm super pumped. Thank you, MIT. The roadmap now exists. It's called the AI Risk Repository. It's a wicked powerful framework that could change the way we approach AI risk management forever. The incredible tool developed by a team of top researchers breaks down AI risks into two essential taxonomies. Oh, I love structure and organization for information. Not only does it help you understand where AI risks come from, but also how to prioritize and manage them. Whether you're a GRC analyst or a CISO, you want this information. Hi, I'm Dr. Gerald Ozier. This is Simply Cyber. And in this video, I'm going to be diving deep into how this tool works, why it matters to you as a professional in cybersecurity, and how it can help your business not only manage AI risk, but actually get ahead of it. Because let's face it, AI isn't going anywhere. But with the right tools, you'll not only be able to keep up with the risks, you'll be able to lead the conversation around them. And that's really, really good for you professionally. So let's talk about the AI risk repository. Imagine trying to solve a puzzle without knowing what the picture is supposed to look like. That would be right. Very frustrating. Now think of AI risk management as that puzzle, but the pieces keep changing shape on top of it. How do you even begin to put it together? Here's the problem. AI risks are diverse. They're interconnected. They're constantly evolving. And for years, professionals have struggled to define and categorize these risks consistently. Different teams, different industries, different definitions. Everyone speaking in different languages is a hot mess express. And the lack of common understanding has made it nearly impossible for businesses to actually tackle AI risks in a coordinated and effective way until now. Enter the AI risk repository. This revolutionary framework finally brings order to chaos and it was developed by leading researchers at MIT and other top institutions. The repository is more than just a database or a spreadsheet. It's a universal language for AI risk. So what exactly is this repository, right? It's a comprehensive database of 777 risks categorized into two powerful taxonomies. These aren't just random categories either. They're carefully designed to help you understand where AI risk comes from and how they manifest. Imagine having an actual structured way to explain AI risk that everyone can understand regardless of their background. This is powerful because right now you can't just say like, no, you have to be able to explain why and then come to an understanding and a ground of what is unacceptable risk and what isn't. And this isn't just about categorizing risks. It's about creating a foundation for meaningful discussion, strategic planning, proactive risk management. The AI risk repository is like a Rosetta Stone for AI risks. It helps you translate complex challenges into actual insights. And the best part, it's accessible, it's comprehensive, and it's constantly evolving just like AI is itself, right? Let's talk about the causal taxonomy. Every risk has a story and like a good story, it has a beginning, a middle and an end. But when it comes to AI, finding the start of that story, the root cause of a risk can feel like searching for a needle in a haystack, right? Where do we begin? Think of AI risks as a web, right? Everything's connected. How do we untangle it? The answer lies in understanding why these risks happen in the first place. And that's where this causal taxonomy comes in, right? It's like a detective toolkit for AI risk, breaking down like, these issues into simple questions. Who or what caused it? Was it intentional? Yes or no? When did it occur? Right? Very simple, very easy to communicate. So let's talk about the entity piece first. Every risk is tied to a decision or action made by either a human or an AI system. Sometimes it's even a mix of both. Uh, so understanding who or what caused the risk is really the first step in mapping out how to manage it, which is ultimately what we're trying to do here. The cause of taxonomy does go deeper and says, was the risk intentional? Sometimes Carl does silly things, or sometimes the machine does what it thinks is right, even though it's not because someone, a human, programmed it, right? Things get interesting when we're talking about was it intentional? Because not all risks are created equal. Some are deliberate, like a hacker, 
you know, busted into something. Some are accidental. Uh, think of like, um, like I said before, with AI and a human developed it. Think of like biases, right? It was trained on a data set of only men. So like when you ask it about something female, it kind of doesn't do a great job of it. It's not deliberate. It's the training data. Because categorizing risk based on intent is the approach they took. The causal taxonomy helps you determine the best approach for mitigation. Intentional risks might need stronger security measures. Unintentional ones might require more thorough testing or better training data, right? Now we ask, uh, when did the risk emerge? Timing is very important when we do these things. Uh, did the risk occur before the AI was deployed while it was still in development? Did it happen after the AI? AI was already in use because pre-deployment risks might involve coding errors, software issues. Uh, Post-deployment risks could include things like AI being repurposed for malicious use or prompt engineering to trick it to do things it shouldn't do. But if you don't know where the problem was, how do you know how to A, calculate and understand the risk and B, more importantly, manage it and correct it and mitigate it and remediate it, right? The, all these things you need to know. All right, so this knowledge is wicked crucial for developing the strategies that aren't just reactive, but proactive. And it's like turning on the lights in a dark room. You can finally see what the problems are and how to deal with them. Let's pivot over to domain taxonomy. So now we know where the risks are coming from, right? The AI risk. But the next question is like, what kind of risk are we actually dealing with? AI is a powerful tool, but like any tool, it can be dangerous if we don't understand the ways that it can go wrong. Uh, if you think of AI as like a forest kind of, there's different types of trees in it, right? Each representing a different kind of risk. If you don't know what kind of trees are in the forest, how can you protect it? Uh, so this domain taxonomy, I love. It's like a detailed map of this forest I'm talking about. It breaks down AI risks into the seven key domains. The domains are like different sections of the forest, each one filled with unique set of challenges and dangers associated with it, right? First one, discrimination and toxicity. AI systems, if not properly managed, can perpetrate or even amplify biases, right? We saw some early AI models uh, uh, get really, really into hate speech and, and just really pinwheel out of control. And it's not really just about what AI does, it's also about how well it performs across different groups. Another domain is privacy and security, near and dear to our heart, right? With AI, the stakes are incredibly high. These systems process vast amounts of data, often sensitive, personal data, right? Data brokers have all the data. If this data is compromised either through a security breach or unintended leak, like asking the AI to give it to you, uh, it's not just about protecting the data. AI systems themselves can be vulnerable to attack, leading to, you know, the manipulation, which is what I'm talking about. Uh, another domain is misinformation, which we're all familiar with, especially during election cycles. AI has the power to create and spread information at unprecedented scale. It can even create art and graphics that look believable that might suggest things that are not true. But we've seen this impact of how AI can be weaponized in this case, right? AI can create filter bubbles where people only see information that reinforces their existing beliefs, echo chambers, they're also called. And this can lead to polarizing societies, divisive societies. It's a huge risk for business. It's a huge risk for public safety. Uh, another domain is malicious actor and misuse. AI in the wrong hands can be devastating, obviously, right? Cyber attacks, frauds, the ability to code up a, a new malware, the ability to take a CVE or vulnerability like a patch and reverse it and find out what the problem was and quickly write an exploit. Uh, there's also a domain on human computer interaction. Uh, and this is all about how we as humans interact with the AI and how it interacts with us. AI systems can be incredibly persuasive. And if we rely on them too much, we risk losing our own agency, which I know sounds insane, but there's people out there who are like, Jesus, chat JPT, take the wheel. It's about finding the right balance. We need AI to assist, not replace our critical thinking and autonomy. I get it, right? AI can do all sorts of things, but like, you know, maybe you should be the final decision maker in these things. Another domain is socioeconomic environmental harms. AI has the potential to centralize power in ways we haven't seen before, leading to greater inequality and possibly environmental damage. Uh, we need to be mindful of how AI affects the world around us, not just economically, but socially, right? These risks are often overlooked because we're so nerdy and into the tech and the in the deets that we don't stop and think like, wait a minute, is this, is this a bigger problem? Last uh, domain is AI system safety, failures, limitations. AI isn't perfect. I know it will tell you that it is, but it's not. It can fail, and sometimes it can fail in really catastrophic ways. It could be a malfunction, a safety oversight, a simple lack of transparency. These failures can have serious, sometimes life-threatening consequences, okay? With this domain taxonomy, you're not just identifying risks, you're categorizing them, understanding them, and importantly, uh, preparing to manage them. 
And that's how we move forward and take advantage of this. So let's talk about the impact of all this. Well, if you're a GRC professional, you're probably juggling a dozen priorities already. You got regulatory requirements, internal audits, filling out some third party questionnaire. Uh, adding AI to the mix can feel like just another spinning plate or, hey, here you go. Why don't you hold this too? But the AI risk repository isn't just another task for you. It's actually a tool that can make the job easier and more effective. So what's in it for you, right? Like that's probably what you're thinking at this point in the video. Let me break it down into three areas. There's improving risk assessment capabilities. Oh yeah. Enabling effective policy creation. Check please and enhancing communication with stakeholders, all critical primary functions of GRC people. So let's talk about risk assessment really quick with AI becoming more integrated into the business processes. You can actually use the AI risk repository to help you structure the way that you assess the risk specific to AI and give you basically organization. So when you go in and talk to the you know sales marketing team or the engineering team or the dev team or the IT team, you can be like, here's what we're talking about. Here's where we are. Let me ask you these structured questions. And instead of just being like a yard sale all over the place, because you'll use the repository to inform you. Let's talk about policy creation. AI is still relatively new. Many orgs are struggling to even figure out what's a policy that they should use. The AI risk repository provides a very clear framework to guide your policy development and help you craft those policies. If you align your policies with the detailed categories and subcategories in the repository, you will ensure comprehensive coverage. Nothing will slip through the cracks. You're not just looking at the one thing that you're really good at. You're covering all the things. You'll address privacy, vulnerabilities, ethical use. Your policies are gonna be so robust and comprehensive. People are gonna be high five and you talking about this guy right here, right? Two thumbs, all smiles. The one who made the sick AI policy, that's you. All right, let's talk about stakeholder communication. The third leg to this stool of making GRC super soldiers uh, out there on AI knowledge. One of the biggest challenges in GRC is getting everyone on the same page, right? Like obviously Carl. So when it comes to something as complex as AI, it's even harder. The risk repository gives you a common language to communicate risk clearly and effectively and consistently, by the way. So every time you're talking about it, you're using the same language and you could talk to your team, the C-suite, external auditors, the board of directors, and be able to communicate effectively without being like, you know, ML and, you know, training data and Kubernetes and look at look at all these cycles. And like the board doesn't care about that. The board cares about straight cash, homie. What's the problem with using the AI? You gotta be able to tell them that, okay? Use this go-to resource. It's a public service. It's not behind a paywall. This isn't some, you know, series A funded, VC backed angel investor, you know, thing. This is literally MIT and a bunch of wicked smart people did a bunch of work and made this AI risk repository so you and I can kick butt as practitioners, right? But let's look at one more thing. The future of AI risk management is just the beginning. AI is going to continue to evolve. It's going to be happening quite quickly. The challenges we face today are just the tip of the iceberg. We've got AI risk managed. I'm telling you, to me, AI is a paradigm shift the way the internet was a paradigm shift to society. It's not a, this isn't next gen technology, single pane of glass. AI is here and we need to get our arms around managing the risks of it. Use this repository, I'm telling you, okay? Now that I've made a compelling case for this thing, what do you have to do? Like, let me give you actionable items. First, go download the repository. There's a link in the description to the MIT site below. Step two, explore the taxonomies. Take a deep dive, read through them, ingest what's going on. Step three, implement and share. Start integrating the insights into your risk management processes that you already have. Share them with your team. Be the person at work that's kicking butt, right? MIT is gonna continue to support and refine this AI risk repository so it's a living tool. If you want more insights and content like this for GRC professionals, subscribe to the channel. I'm always putting out content, trying to help practitioners kick butt and make them aware of sick tools like this. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. Until next time, stay secure.